here in the Carolinas, uh, three or four day trips where people go out and they're, they're watching other people's kids. They got to go to work. And the guys, sometimes there's a parent who's lucky enough to take the time off of work to get out and they can watch other people's kids for them. Are you with me, are you with me so far? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So other people watching your kids or you're watching other people's kids. So after the second day or the third day, this one guy was on either a second or third divorce. And he's got this one little girl, 12 years old. And he's a pretty girl, apparently, but I, I hadn't really seen who he was talking to. And he said, sweetheart, he said, you're going to make somebody a great first wife. <laughs> he's like, God damn. I couldn't say anything because I was driving a bus and I had to try to keep it a straight line. Because uh, I didn't know who he was talking to or whatever. I could hear voices behind me, so I was kind of like, well, that was just too funny. But it's a true story. It's like, oh, great. Yeah, this going to be a first time. So I tell people, this is oh, okay, folks, in case of emergency, any window with a red handle is an escape window. There's an escape hatch in the back of the bus. I can fit through the escape hatch. And if Santa Claus can fit out that chimney, you guys can fit through that chimney as well in case of emergency. Are you with me? <laughs> yes? Okay, good times. So um, we're out there, and I tell them that, and, it's just, and I tell them the fire extinguishers in the front of the bus. And they're like, they're like, why is he telling us all this stuff? I said, because in case of emergency and you need this information, 90% of the time, I'm not going to be here to tell you this. And then they get nervous because they think I'm going to jump out the door or something like that. They don't realize in every police accident or a TV report, in a, major, in a major bus accident, nobody was injured except for the bus driver. It's like, okay. So it's just, these are true stories as to why you tell people stuff like that. So you're on a bus trip. You want to know these kind of things in case of emergency. So I actually have notes. It's kind of fun. You, um, you guys have kids. You got uh, when you went through school. They were always every year. My daughter would go to school, and they would say, "Okay, what's mom and dad do for a living?" You know, mom's a bus. Mom's a school teacher. Dad's a bus driver. And all the kids would say, "Tell them what grandpa does. Tell them what your grandfather does." He said, "Well, my dad, I retired from track from Navy, tractor trailer driving, and his final evolution of retirement was he moved to Maine and became a stripper." <laughs> So, <laughs> and he was the only stripper for 90 miles. It's true, and, it, and it's just weird, and it just happened like that. But uh, he was looking for things to do. He kept retiring and finding different ways to re evolve and come out in a different way. Because, like I say, when you've been in the Navy and submarines, there's not a whole lot of civilian usage for people in submarines. I mean, there's nuclear power plant operators, and that's where most of those guys are from. And he was a navigator. So, unless you're a, a really going to stay in the dark and try to say, okay, go left in 25 feet, and GPS hadn't been out yet, and he wasn't doing the voices for that stuff, but he was just had to find other things to do, so he became a truck driver. He has seven kids at home, and you, you got to keep working when you retire at 35 years old. So he did that, he did truck driving, then he retired to Florida, did handyman jobs, and then after he got tired of Florida, he moved to Maine. And while I was in Florida, I had a chance to be an ambulance driver, and I did it for a little while. And it was interesting because people would say, hey, you don't remember me? He says, Paul, I said, really appreciate you helping me out. And the last time you saw me, I, 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 I'm doing so much better now. I was like, well, who are you? He said, well, you know, you came to my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. You helped pick me up. You scooped me up. I had vomit all over me. There was blood all over the place. The dogs were barking. Oh, Mrs. Johnson, it's good to see you. Everything right now. That's fantastic. Yay. Didn't recognize you standing up. It's great. It's the only time you ever see somebody who's on their own, on their own floor, you know, bleeding out or something. They just put them all back together and drive at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's good times. So that was one of the goofy things. But yeah, he just retired, kept moving around. He, he became a stripper. I guess I should probably let you know. He bought a vat you could put furniture in, too. You put vat, you know, put the furniture in a vat and you pull it back out and the paint's all gone. That's the kind of stripping he did at that point. Although several people several people did actually ask him. He's like, oh, I, you know, I paid $5 to see that. Jeez. <laughs> Although that wasn't like that. It wasn't that kind of an accent in Maine. It was like, I, I can't do a Maine accent right this second. Okay. You know, I, I, you know, I'd see this. You know, I'd pay. And he's in the funny thing is great. Maine had a lot of folks that retired from other places just like here. My dad retires to places where other retirees are. It's just one of those crazy things. And uh, I ended up in Hendersonville, North Carolina. That's how I ended up there. That's my five minutes, folks. Enjoy yourselves. Have a good time. Appreciate you hanging in there for us. Yeah. Here's for Craig. Here we go. All right. Paul.